Hello, Connor friends. My name is Sarah, and I love sharing tips and tricks to help you stay optimized and organized and have fun at the same time. Today's not a very fun topic <laughs> at all, actually. I will be discussing planner consumerism. This topic has been very heavy on my mind lately, and I'm kind of going to share my background with, you know, my shopping habits, FOMO in the planner community. I kind of want to be very real with y'all about how I feel about this, how it has affected me, and things that you can do to kind of avoid falling into debt <laughs> because of planner supplies. The special thanks to Planning My Own Magic and Planning Calm. They did their own take on FOMO in the planner community the last year actually and i wanted to share my own take as well kind of wanted to share my thoughts what i have observed and most of all i'll let you know how you can just feel a little bit better about yourself and make sure that fomo is not affecting you in a very big way but yes planner consumerism is a very big thing in the planner community, overconsumption, buying too many planners, which I'm going to talk about like all sides of the coin because it's not all black and white. So without further ado, let's jump right in. I'm going to start off with my own background, with my journey um, through the planner community and how my spending habits have evolved. First of all, I have a philosophy and you know, I, I have a bunch of notes here. So my philosophy is a painter needs their canvas, a painter needs their paints, <laughs> and their brushes, and all of these items are tools. They're a means to create, but you kind of unwind. And that's us in the planner community. A planner needs their planners, their journals, stickers, highlighters, and watchy. That's my philosophy where uh, planning is more than a tool for some. Planning is an art. It's a way that we unwind, that we share who we are, especially online. Our planner spreads are our creative expression as people who enjoy decorative planning. So taking that in mind, that's a philosophy that I have carried throughout a long, long time. And I have been someone that has always loved stationery. Since kindergarten, Lisa Frank, everything, planners especially have been amazing. They have been, to a certain degree, a compulsion. And when I really started to get into the planner community in 2016, when I realized, oh my gosh, you can use stickers to plan. Yes, like sign me up. That was the moment that, you know, I made a click in my head and up to that we I think I hadn't ever thought about buying like a, at that point a $55 planner which was Aaron Condren at the time they were about $55 and I thought oh my gosh okay it's a lot of money but it's an investment it's a tool it's something that I will be using all year long and that's kind of how I started right where I made the clip where you are going to buy an expensive piece of stationery, but it's a tool. So fast forward now, 2024, where I don't just have one Erin Condren planner, I have two that I use on the regular. I have notebooks and I do use these, but at the same time, since I got into the planner community and now my income has also evolved, I make much more money now than I make then. So it's kind of proportional, but I just wanted to like, <laughs> I share this thought process, how it goes from, you know, you convincing yourself into something and then just like exploding and just like how, how it evolves. That is what I do. Like, it's okay. It's okay to have a hobby. It's okay to splurge on your hobbies once in a while. But I think last month is when I splurged a little bit too much. I spent way more than I wanted to, way more than I had budgeted on planners because I just got so much FOMO. With the Beetlejuice movie coming out, like I got the Beetlejuice planner limited edition. I got like a hell of a play planner and it was 
for a giveaway. Like there's a lot of things that I bought. There were so many sales, so many sales last month, especially since, you know, dipper shops are like, dipper shops and planner shops are getting ready for you to buy your planners for 2025. So there's a bunch going on. And sometimes even if I know I'm not gonna buy that planner, I still look at it. I still watch videos. I just enjoy it. So yeah, I really wanted to share my background. This kind of like irresponsible spending caused my credit card to really increase and it's not proportional to how much I make. I've just been spending recklessly. I wanted to share my story so you can kind of see and look at yourself, you know, watch your actions because it can be an issue if you're doing it irresponsibly. Now, I'm not saying don't buy planners. <laughs> I'm gonna give you like a whole list of thought processes that might come through your head and how to kind of help you. <laughs> I done buy them. Anyway, next topic. So now that we got my story out of the way, I am part of the problem. I am a planner influencer, if you could call me that. I am someone that earns commissions from you purchasing my planner or stationary products. So naturally, I will want to share as much as I can with you for you to see a wide range of products. And this is something that you have to keep in mind every time you see a planner influencer online. I have seen people online that have multiple planners, like way more than I could ever use. And sometimes you have to be sure that you know how to separate like the reality of it from what is actually happening. Sometimes I share my planner lineup and I'm delivering all. I think I will use all my planners and I don't always do. My commitment to you is to be more realistic with you and myself about my planner lineup, about what I will actually be using throughout the year. But just know that a lot of people that you see online have so many planners and you see them planning in so many planners, sometimes they're a full-time job. Uh, sometimes um, their content creation business is a side hustle. It's a business. So naturally, they're going to want to show you as much so you can make an informed decision and use their links to buy their products, which we are really, really thankful anytime that you use our links to buy our products. But just know that it's not us like to leave you buy. We're not wanting you to like overspend and buy, well, at least me. My goal is for you to make an informed decision. When I do my flip throughs, my main thought process is for you to do your research and see what you want to buy. If you're thinking of buying that, that Iron Condren sticker book, well, let me show you the full flip through of the sticker book so you can make an informed decision. Just remember that, separate what you see all one from reality and know that no normal person uses like five plus planners on a daily. Maybe some people like really do enjoy using a lot of planners. I like using a lot of planners sometimes when I have more time, but that's the irony of it all. Like sometimes you don't have enough time to use all of your planners, but I just want you to remember that not everything is real. Not everything you see online. When you see those restock videos, People using like a million different gadgets and filling up their refrigerator to the brim. That was probably not even their real refrigerator. That's not how things happen. So just know that. I seriously wrote down all of my notes here. So I'm going to share everything with you. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is why do we consume? Why do you feel this need to buy all the products you see online? Well, I kind of already talked about it. it planner influencers, planner content creators, we like to share, we inspire you. I get inspired. I know that anytime we see someone using this amazing product or like they set up their spreads a certain way, I want to do that. I get FOMO. But for those of you that don't know what FOMO is, it's fear of missing out. And when you're seeing everyone online doing this, you're like, oh my gosh, like, I have to follow this trend. I'm going to like stay behind if I don't follow this trend. We had trends like with the Traveler's Journals. And then right now I feel like it's a lot of Hobonichi. Like people want to use Hobonichis. At one point, like it was the 
no white spaced stickers trends where you like had to fill up your whole spread showed no white space at all it's just like what we see on social media curiosity to try new things and the fact that we're always inspired and looking for the next best thing and we get a lot of shiny object syndrome so i kind of wanted to talk about all of those thought processes that may go through your head when you are seeing something online it can be many things from okay that person uses more than one planner i totally could do that just look at your own lifestyle before you decide on purchasing another planner do you really have space to sit down and plan in a whole different planner think about that it's on sale the process falls a lot it comes a lot like it's on sale i have to buy it it won't be on sale again i can promise you it will there are certain items that you may see that they're limited edition next thought process it's limited edition it happened with the beetlejuice planner it did sell out pretty quickly <laughs> so just know like if you are going to make a purchase like that think about how it will fit in your life if it's a collector's item maybe you'll be able to sell in the future or keep for your own you know keepsakes <laughs> do you really need it is it something that you will actually use so remember that one thing that i feel like i did miss out on is hello petite paper she had like an anniversary box and i had it in my cart and then sold out so quickly it was a bummer but in the end i thought okay that anniversary box was heavily discounted and it had so many items but i honestly wasn't going to use all of the items so i opted to buy some of the items that were still left in the box that i knew that i would use and enjoy as well as other stickers so just remember that next time you make a limited edition purchase will you actually use it another thought process that may go through your head is i need it do you really need it easier said than done because i have had this go through my head so many times where i think i do need it i will absolutely use it every single day of my life and it ends up being that i don't use it like i bought a famous planner once i thought oh my gosh this will make me work out i did it i used it one month and a half and i didn't use it just remember that do you actually need it if you find yourself like going your day to day and realizing that you are having a lot of trouble without that item then maybe you need it it happened with me and my tweezers i lost my good tweezers and i was really struggling <laughs> to place my stickers down i thought okay it's time to make a purchase of new tweezers and i don't typically like splurge on them but i bought a pack of two that were like eight dollars which is more than i would ever spend on tweezers but i thought that i needed them and i did and i use them every single day when i'm planning so just look at that thought process of do you actually need it the next this is a big one sometimes i see creators online and they are so nice and i want so badly to support their shop i'm like oh my gosh like they are so great they're commenting on my stuff like I'm nobody in this world and they're still commenting, but do you actually have a need for their products? It's just like you kind of identifying whether it's just your need to support them and to give them your business because you believe in them or do you actually like what they sell? If it's both, you've hit the jackpot because of course if you love an item and you love the creator it's an excellent match made in heaven but if you don't think you actually need the product a lot or it doesn't fit into your aesthetic like why buy something just because you want to do a good thing which you will do a good thing for the shop but if you want to fall into debt it's not matching up and a lot of times i've wanted to do that because i just love an online <laughs> personality so much and they are so kind but you have to like separate those two and know what is actually functional and i'm so guilty of this i don't know what i'm going to use it but i want it and i'm gonna buy it 
This is such a common thing and I'm so guilty. There are times when I regret it. <laughs> when I think, oh my gosh, I bought this. I don't have bandwidth to use it. Just remember that when you make an impulse purchase, like first keep it in your cart or whatever, wait for a sale, but think about it. <laughs> think about it before you actually buy it and think about its actual functional practical use within your life. Hey, colors! Sometimes we just go off of the aesthetic and we don't think about the functionality. This is just similar to I need it, it's pretty, I gotta have it. Think about it. Think about how functional it is in your life. Sometimes you're just bored. Sometimes you're doing scrolling, you're looking and you come across something and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I this is so pretty. And you just go down the rabbit hole like <laughs> looking at all the specs of the planner or the stickers and no, just me. <laughs> no, it's really sometimes you're bored and, and you just start shopping. So those are basically most of the thought processes that can go through your head when you are making an impulse purchase. So just remember that, just think of your thought process and know how to rationalize it and how functional it will be for you. Which brings me to my next topic. Now that we've kind of talked about the problem of why we consume so much, and I want to like make a little pause here. A lot of people that you may see online, one, they get a lot of free products. Two, they do this professionally, just like I mentioned, it's their business. But three, a lot of people are on a higher income level. They're very high earners and they have the expendable income to make these purchases. So for me, like I'm not someone who is a like a super high earner. A lot of my income goes into stationery because I do have someone to fall back on, which is my husband. He makes the most of the money in our relationship. So I feel a little bit, you know, secure, but not everybody has the security. And even though I have that, I know that reckless spending has affected me before. So just remember that. And I wanted to give you like eight action items that you can remember next time you are thinking of an impulse stationary purchase. And these are things that I I will do my best to try to live by. I've spent a lot and I, and I think I'm pretty much, I'm very much set with my items. I don't think that I'll be making pretty big purchases next year outside of like my main core planners. So I'm really trying to live by this and I hope that you do too. I hope it can help you. So number one is Plan your purchases. If you know that you use a certain item, plan it out. Make sure that it still fits within your lifestyle. Do an audit. I realized that my vertical planner is not fitting my purpose. I switched to the monthly planner because I'm not going to do vertical planning anymore. It just doesn't fit into my lifestyle. Identify what you will need. And remember, if you like to use one of one planner, if you like to use guided journals, it's okay. I, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Just use them. A great example of this is D. Christine from Honey Style of Joy. I've watched one of her like latest videos and she talks about her planner lineup. And you can see how she has used her planners like very thoughtfully and I admire that because sometimes I'll get a planner and I won't use it as much as I want to but she does and she plans out her purchases she's thoughtful about them and she hopefully uses them so I'll link her video down below because it was very inspiring for me it kind of also inspired me to do this video number two is my philosophy never buy full price never always wait for a sale don't get like blindsided by all the sales that are happening at once like i did last month very bad but really can you think about buying items like if i buy something from erin condren outside of the big launches even then i'll try to use a coupon but for anything else that i buy i buy when there is a sale with arc on me it's really the best so wait for a sale 
think about the items that you're going to buy goes with number one, plan your purchases and buy during sales. Hunter and Hunter, I've watched multiple videos, multiple flip throughs. I found out, you know, what I liked most about it, what definitely I thought would fit within my lifestyle. If you are thinking you will purchase, like look for it online. Chances are there will be a ton of reviews. Watch reviews, listen to the people. A lot of times, yes, any influencers are paid and you may think that they're not gonna be super honest, but I have seen people be very honest about items and leave reviews the way I would. I do this a lot. I feel like I'm pretty true to what I feel about these products, even though I get paid for them because I want you to make an informed decision. So just know that, do your research. For number four, I would say find your aesthetic and your go-to pieces. I feel like this is something that is not talked about as much. When you have an aesthetic that you stick to, you like know what to buy and you're not out there experimenting. It may take a little bit of experimenting until you get to your aesthetic, but, and, and this is not something that you develop right away. Like for me, my aesthetic didn't come until like a few years into me planning and, and finding the pieces that I liked the most. One good example of this is me using the Erin Condren monthly sticker book. I think for like the last four years, month by month, I have been using it to create my monthly dashboard. And I feel my aesthetic, it's colorful, it's fun. And I have more than one aesthetic. Like I love the colorful, but I also like the muted pink colors. So that's why I gravitate a lot towards Hello Petite Paper stickers. Her stickers are part of like my main sticker group and I follow her and her sales and know that those are like my go-to stickers. So finding your aesthetic I think is important to kind of like keep like a straight in view of what you mean to buy and not going in and buying all the things. <laughs> Number five, if you are going to experiment, if you are trying to find your aesthetic, do it in bite-sized pieces. Don't like go and buy like 50 sticker sheets all at once. If you don't know, you will love it. If you're just relying on a review, maybe just, I don't know, if you wanna get the free shipping, do it enough, enough to get the free shipping or maybe not even that much, just get what you need. So that for me is, it's really important. Number six, set a budget. And this should be like super basic, but honestly, it, it is one of the hardest things to do. Setting a budget and sticking to it is, is really difficult. So do your best. <laughs> Number seven is a very personal one and one that I wanted to share with you. Think about the emotional toll this purchase will have on you while having this extra planner at more pressure into your lifestyle rather than helping it. Will you feel really guilty afterwards because you spent too much? Just think about everything that falls into this. Are you just buying this because you feel anxious at the moment? Maybe you need to relax and find a different <laughs> distraction. Your emotions play a lot in your purchases. So just think about that before making that purchase. Number eight, and I've already like emphasized this, but know that not everything online is real. You may see people planning like up for long periods of time and create these wonderful spreads that take hours to do, especially bullet journaling spreads. Like I know that I was so influenced by bullet journals. I got the Amanda Ridgely planner at one point because I thought, oh my gosh, bullet journaling is my next thing. I'm not artistic. It wasn't my style. So I spent money on her planner. I used it like two months on the year. It was very wasteful. So just know that you probably won't have the time to do everything that these online creators do. Those are my action items. <laughs> Those are things that I would like you to remember before you make that next big planner purchase. Last but not least, I want you to think about certain things like substitutes. For me, economy has hit pretty bad. Like everything is so much more expensive and 
where in the past I used to be able to spend a little bit more on my hobbies. Now things are pretty tight just because everything is just a lot more expensive. So I have to be very thoughtful about my purchases. So for example, instead of buying like weekly sticker kits, now I get like washi tape, and deco stickers that may be easier to incorporate and i will spend a lot like where you can get a sticker kit for like i don't know 15 to like 25 30 dollars for one week of course you can use it for multiple weeks but let's be honest that doesn't always happen in the past i used to buy sticker kits for almost every week and now honestly i really can't do that and it's not something that i'm willing to spend so what i do is washi and deco stickers I maybe mean, journaling kits that i can use throughout the whole week in my daily if you have box stickers maybe you can substitute them for highlighters maybe have a good pack of highlighters in your stash that you can use to highlight boxes to make quarter boxes stencils stamps it doesn't mean that i'm telling you okay go find a new set of stamps <laughs> no it's not where it's going but maybe Think about how you will replace certain things that add up, but that you really want to use. Like I love planning my weeks. I love weekly sticker kits, but I can't always do that. So if you have a specific planner or guided drama for a specific activity that you can probably substitute for a notebook, you can do that. Like you can write down your own guided activities if that's within your possibilities. So. Maybe a notebook may work better, a cheaper notebook. I don't know. I don't always like to sacrifice quality over quantity. So I I will always choose my Erin Condren notebooks over just a regular like Walmart notebook. Honestly, that's just me. Like the paper means so much to me. So there are certain things that you will want to splurge on, but just think of those substitutes that can help you save a little bit of money so that's my story i'm sticking to it <laughs> i just I, I wanted to do like a video that i was aims to which is just sitting down and chatting uh, i'm so thirsty after chatting so much <laughs> but i really wanted to sit down and chat with y'all and talk about this especially before black friday's coming up and all of the sales that are happening for 2025 i'm real player bestie here online and I want what's best for you. I know sometimes I may influence you negatively and I'm sorry. I just love putting the items I love out there for you to see. But I really don't want for your purchases to get the best of you. Let me know your thoughts. I really want to know what you think in the comments about this whole like planner consumerism issue. Like the FOMO. How you can like you know, get a little ahead of yourself. Let me know in the comments if you have any more tips for me for um, a reading shopaholic who has no business with a credit card. If you want to hear your thoughts, definitely. Um, I want us all to have a conversation and I want all of us to have healthy spending habits, especially with the holidays and everything that's coming up. Happy to have you here. Thank you all for listening to my planner spiel. If you enjoyed this, Give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more platter videos and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss a video. Thank you all so much for being here and watch this video next. Bye!